You're watching Alaska's News Source. Well, it's been a busy day on the Iditarod. Ryan Reddington and Pete Kaiser are closing in on their third checkpoint of the day, but they're veteran mushers and they've run this trail before. There are two rookies at the front of the pack vying for another top spot. Sports director Jordan Rodenberger has the story from Unilaclete. Well, after more than 700 miles along the Iditarod Trail, it can be pretty easy to get caught up in the Unilaclete checkpoint with all of this great food and the warm beds with some teams in the front of the pack taking measures to just blow through this checkpoint altogether. Ryan Reddington arriving into Unilakleet at 4.20 a.m. Sunday morning, the first time he has been in the lead at the first checkpoint along the western Alaska coast, staying for more than three hours before taking off to maintain his lead. Unilakleet's in my blood, and, and I'm very proud to be here, and, and um, thank you guys very much. Yep. Good night! Yeah. Meanwhile, Pete Kaiser and Richie Deal camp for several hours, about 20 miles outside of Unilakleet, part of their strategy is to just blow through the checkpoint. Following the top three came two battling for Rookie of the Year, Hunter Keefe and Eddie Burke Jr., who arrived 22 minutes apart and left three minutes apart. But if Hunter Keefe doesn't win Rookie of the Year, he certainly has a case for a sportsmanship award. As on the run from Grayling to Eagle Island, Burke dozed off, fell off the sled, and lost his team of 10 dogs who ran about 15 miles by themselves to the next checkpoint. When I got back to the checkpoint, they were all scared. It looked like I abandoned them. They were all sour attitudes. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't leave you guys, not on purpose. <laughs> Burke, with few options, began making the walk to Eagle Island until he came across another musher. Um, I thought I was catching a team because I saw a headlight, and then I realized that, oh, it was a person walking. And there's the ITI walkers and stuff, so I figured it must have been one of them. And then he kind of stopped really close to the trail, and I was like, oh, that's Eddie. Keith didn't hesitate to give Burke a ride, which would only hurt his race time. I didn't really think twice I let him on because I, would, I wouldn't want to be walking at 20 below. But Keith knows what his team is capable of. It really uh, showed how incredible my team was because um, he hopped on the sled, so we doubled the load. And you can ask him, not one dog ever looked back for even half a second wondering what was going on. They just um, chugged along like little freight trains they were. That was big time. It's being a true sportsman. And so what did the rookie learn after losing his team? Well, I rigged out myself a little, uh, I got this right here, and it snaps to another line on my sled. So if I do fall off, I ain't going too far. And now the rookie tandem, who can't seem to separate from each other, are now braving one of the toughest stretches along the Iditarod Trail. And for those that are out of the Unilakleet checkpoint, they are on to the western Alaska coast where absolutely anything can happen. Some of the most wild stories from the trail taking place down that stretch. So be sure to keep tuning in to Alaska's news source for the latest along the Iditarod Trail. But for now, we're going to be sending it back to the studio. And there are a number of awards that are given out throughout the Iditarod. Last year, Dan Caduce won the always sought after Leonard Seppala Humanitarian Award. He won the award for his exceptional dog care after crossing under the Burled Arch in Nome with all 14 of the dogs he started with. And now that dog care is coming to the forefront for the musher who is realizing his spot in the race. Our main problem this year was the super warm temperatures and a little bit of rough trail we had at the beginning of the race. I had these guys kind of souped up a little too hot and so they came out of the gate too hard and it took its toll. Now we're kind of on autopilot and I'm just let the front of the race go and we're just going to take our time and cruise into Nome. And our crew caught up with Wade Mars in Unilakleet. He, it, this is 12th Iditarod. And when he's not thinking about his dogs on the trail, he thinks about a little bit of everything, life and priorities, especially with a new baby on the way this August. I came up here for a couple months to Alaska and ran the Yukon Quest and now the Iditarod. And our first kid there, he's about two and a half. So I've been missing him a lot. Thinking about how hard it is to say bye. <laughs> be gone all the time so and it's quite a race at the front of the pack let's check the leaderboard ryan reddington pete kaiser and richie deal are all out of shaq tulik but that's not the whole story 
Kaiser and Reddington are really racing. They've maintained about a six mile difference between them for the past two and a half hours. We do expect the leader into Koyuk about 11 o'clock tonight. And to keep up tr on track with all the latest Iditarod news, check out our live blog on alaskasnewsource.com.